the idea for today's session is it's an open Q&A. Um, as a change, um, I've, I've um, asked you all to answer a set of questions. And the main question was uh, actually, what is your top challenge with Rome? So I organize these about once a month, uh, these office hours. Uh, my name is Ramses. If you don't know me, I run RomeStack, which is a knowledge base of Rome research articles and a membership community where basically you get direct access to me, to a community and to everything, all the content that I create around Rome. And this is, so this is a public office hours. You will get the recording. You, um, you will be able to interrupt me. And the idea is to go through the questions that I got. Hopefully within the hour, I will be able to answer them all. Some of the questions will require like a follow-up. So this is also really good for me having these sessions uh, to, to understand what are your needs and what are running, uh, what are people running into? So as you can see, I've written down the first names of uh, the, the, the people who asked the question. And as you can see, there's a lot of overlap. So many of your needs are overlapping. So hopefully you can also connect here, help each other out a little bit. So feel free again to use the chat I'm not going to share it and just connect. Use this time to, to connect if you want and to ask additional questions. Um, I'll be do, I will be doing a lot of talking. So sorry <laughs> if, you, if you don't like that. Um, and again, interrupt me, ask questions in the chat. After every question, I will check the chat if there are questions, if you, if you don't feel comfortable uh, speaking up. So the the main thing i always hear to get started with the first question is how to build workflows how to build systems and many many people have a problem with this and i must say after using rome for i think 17 18 months now personally i've i've pinpointed a few of my workflows but i use several workflows next uh, next to each other and they they intertwine but it's has been a real discovery process. So I will be teaching, and you can also see in the, the Rome Stack knowledge base, I will be teaching uh, in, in, the, in the near future, several systems. So one system I see a need for is writing. So I want to focus more on what is a simple process you can use to collect notes and to turn it into creative output. Um, but I also see just that like a need for a process to just revisit your notes. Um, for many people, um, note-taking is a way to learn. It's not necessarily to produce content. And I believe that just with a simple process, you, you can really turn your notes into a learning system. So those are the things I will be focusing on uh, in the coming months, creating articles to sell paced courses. So stay tuned for that. But um, if you don't fall in that category, and also I will be creating content about this, I would say you need to look at your work from a systems perspective. So if you want to figure out what, what workflow you, you, uh, you need to build uh, or what steps you need to incorporate in a, in a Rome workflow, start, start from a systems perspective. So um, there are several resources you, you can dive into. Uh, one I like that I like personally, which is gear, geared toward Notion, but it's uh, his name is August Bradley, and he really approaches uh, Notion from a systems design or a systems thinking perspective. And I think we can learn a lot as Rome users from that as well, because although Rome doesn't impose a structure, I think it's very ben beneficial if you can find some structure in the process. So really think about what are the outputs? So what is it that you want to do? Uh, may sound very obvious, but if I look at my, my own process and it's mostly around content creation, my output is always either a newsletter or an article. And that article has several objectives. For example, teach someone how to do space repetition in Rome, as an example. So I start with that output in mind, and then I think of the inputs. So in, in that case of writing an article to teach people how to do space repetition, 
first, maybe I want to understand better what is space repetition, what algorithms are out there? Are there already plugins? What are people already doing? So that's like my collection phase. And then I have a whole system in between, which I will not go into right now, but I can link to some stuff um, that basically manipulate the inputs to lead to the output. And this is really a systems thinking perspective you, you should adopt. And I think it's even more necessary to adopt this mindset of systems thinking because Rome doesn't impose a structure. And the same with Notion, you see people become like architects of their systems. The, the, the difference being between Notion and Rome, which I think for many people is, is very difficult, is that Notion, you have blocks, everything is very visual, whereas in Rome, it's all text-based. So you carry part of your of the of the workflow or the structure of the workflow in your head, and I think um, I think coming up with templates. So first, doing things manually, thinking about the outputs, thinking about the inputs and the manipulations that you do with that information, and then trying to put as much as possible in templates. I think that is the way to go. But again, I will. I see this need really be out there in the community. So I will I'll write a series of articles about how to actually adopt this systems perspective and apply it to Rome. Let's see if there are questions about this. I, I hope this makes sense, even though I'm not really giving an answer on how to find the, the or how to build the most effective workflow. I, I hope this makes sense. Um, if not, interrupt me. Now something a little bit more practical, the second question, um, how to find things I know are in my graph. So I think this, this challenge is like, it consists of several parts. First of all, like, like it's one thing to know that something is in your graph and remember the keyword. And it's another thing having like a gist of, of something that's in your mind, you think, oh, I, I cannot remember a keyword. So, there are several approaches to do this. So if you already know what keyword you have in mind, use queries. Uh, and if they're not linked, it's not a problem because you can use unlinked references to link keywords. And I will link to a few articles in a bit in the chat um, so you can dig a little bit deeper. Alternatively, I like to use block search. So what I do is if I cannot find anything, then and my keyboard needs to wake up, which it isn't doing right now. Just do it like this. So this is block search, and you can you can input anything. So um, you can. It, it it doesn't have to be linked. So it doesn't matter if you have turned something into a link. Block search really enables you to type any keyword, so I can just write keyword here, and then it will look in all blocks that contain the word keyword. So that is basically how you can use block search. And often just by clicking the, the, the block and holding shift and click, you can see, okay, what, what is the context and where, where you can dig a little bit deeper. I really recommend you to take the, the, the name Rome seriously. So searching is one thing. Um, and I think many people of us are, have gotten really used to using search, but I think the beauty of Rome is that you can roam your graph. You can jump from block to block. And by using, for example, block search, using the double parentheses, you can find an entry point, even though you haven't linked something, but you can find an entry point to more interesting content that will that will trigger your thinking. Um, and again, we get we get to workflows. Uh, so having a purpose to resurface con your your notes, I think that is the crucial part that's lacking from many people's systems. So they don't really have problems collecting stuff because we have Readwise, Instapaper, all these different tools. Uh, maybe even organization isn't a problem because maybe you already use some, some tags or links or some metadata. 
Again, if you use Readwise, it's very easy to do that automatically. But then the question is, are you actually revisiting notes and refining them and linking them? And are, are your notes feeding your thinking? So knowing how to find stuff in your graph, I think it's also in interacting with, with your notes. Um, and it, it boils down to having an approach. So last week I held a, uh, a session about the code framework. If you want to know more about the co code framework, just Google for code framework, Tiago Forte. And it basically is a four-step process to go from capturing, so to see capturing notes, to organizing them, to distilling your insights, to expressing uh, your unique perspective. And I am going to put this in the chat. Um, the latter one is a recording, which is only available for uh, members. And if you registered for the event, you should have the link to the recording in your mailbox. Let's see. Ah, Stephanie discovered block search. Nice. That was amazing. I didn't realize, like, I've always just used that main um, search at the top. Never yeah. knew you could do block search. That I was just trying to find this webinar template that I was, or um, some webinar notes that I had. Mm -hmm. I was able to find it just by doing that. Yeah, yeah. And you and you can use you can use the same. Like I can type in code framework. Oh wait, it's not. I need to. By the way, I need to plug in my. I need to plug in my my keyboard in a bit. So, uh, but for example, I can I can write it in here. And these are all blocks where I mentioned code framework. So this basically works like a uh, like a block search as well. But the beauty is of the of the inline block search with the double parentheses is that I use it personally to build outlines. So I really like it that way as well. Let's see other questions. Um, Julia, I'm definitely much better at throwing stuff into Rome than going through and refining it later. Yeah. For me, for a long time, that, that was the, the main issue. Um, I also believe that if you have, a, have like a system to go through your notes, it's less likely that you become a note hoarder or an information hoarder because if you never, if you never are faced by your hoarding, because it's it's a, it's in a digital space, right? It's so easy to filter out. But just imagine your your house overflowing. You know when there's a problem at some point, like when you cannot leave your house because there's too much junk in the way. Um, but like in a digital world, you will only notice if you actually live with your notes. So if you if you chuck them away. It's a nice, it's a nice exercise to 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 uh, to use up some time, but it's not really useful. So I think the process part is crucial. Um, the third point: What are best practices to use Roam on mobile? Yeah, this is a pain point for many. Um, my first question, my first reaction is: What are the main issues? So I don't know if people who ask this or are facing this could share in the chat what is specifically their their issue but I, I've, I've heard this more often um that like the, the quick capture isn't fast enough or uh, when you open a quick capture it's still like spinning it's slow uh it's not nice to move uh, blocks around my advice is <laughs> For now, don't do too much on a mobile, which sounds stupid now that we live in a mobile first uh, uh, era. I realize that. I know they are working, like the Rome team is working on a on a mobile app. I wouldn't hold my breath. Um, I would use either a service like phone to Rome if you're comfortable with using uh, third-party services and plugins. It's a free service, and basically you can text, uh, Telegram, WhatsApp, uh, or 
I think even email or that's coming up email uh, messages to a specific number or, or email address, and then they will add it to your graph. So that is the, the, the easiest way. We'll put this link in the chat. Oh, and Bill says uh, one of the issues on mobile is editing. It takes two taps to get into editing mode. Yeah, and it's fin finicky. So I don't. I, I like to take quick notes, at quick to dos. Um, but otherwise, I I use drafts as much as possible. This is a. I think you can use this for free. Um, everything that you need, you can you can use this for free. I think otherwise, some other notes tool. What I like about drafts is you open drafts and you start with a fresh note immediately. So when I have a quick, uh, a quick thought, like a, a burst of insight, I just type a quick note. And then during my weekly planning session, I just go through my drafts uh, inbox and check whatever is interesting and I, I archive the rest. Um, it's not an ideal answer. It's the best I can give it at this moment. Uh, is there an Android version of drafts? I don't think so. Um, I don't use Android myself, sorry. So I may, maybe someone else knows of like a equivalent of a note-taking app that when you open the app that it starts with a fresh note. I don't know if anything like that exists uh, for Android. I mean, there should be, right? <laughs> I, think, I think there is probably app. So if anyone knows of anything, Please put it in the chat. Um, and the question, which I only got once in this um, in this survey, but which I hear a lot, is how to collaborate and share knowledge from Rome. So um, there, there are a few takes on this. So. Uh, and, and, and this, this question will come back in, um, let's see. Yeah, how to get ideas out of row. But collaborating on knowledge in, in, in a shared uh, Roam graph, the crucial part is standardization. So you need to work with um, like a standard and the way to impose that standard in a collaborative graph is I think first be really good in instructions. Again, Rome doesn't impose a structure. So you need to come up with a structure yourself. So you need to train people. And then when you want to help people make it easier to actually follow the, the agreed structure, really use, um, um, templates as much as possible, because that will help to enforce a standardized structure on the graph and make it easy to, to retrieve notes. And then in the end, if you really want to make knowledge graph useful, you also need a curator, I believe. So you need someone to go through notes that people write on their own pages, because I think that is one of the best practices that everyone has a, a page with their own name and that they, instead of using the daily notes page to input information, that they use their personal page to input information and then use the daily notes page to resurface information. So using, using the, the link references, using the dates function, you can really uh, use the, the daily notes page um, as a dashboard almost. And two resources I really recommend for this if you want to learn how to take notes uh, for your own graph or uh, want to learn from others and want to see this, this idea of everyone having their own personal page and feeding into a collective in, like intelligence, check out Rome Book Club. Um, the handle on Twitter is Rome Book Club. So even if you don't have Twitter, um, this, this account here you will see um, like you, you'll get all the information how to uh, how to attend Rome Book Club. Um, the the name Rome Book Club it's a little bit uh, of a bait and switch. It's not really about books. It's about learning how to use Rome. <laughs> That's basically it. Um, under the, the guise of we're we're discussing a book, and then this 
is one very interesting project I like. Uh, this is by uh, Matt McGann, who runs a, a, co a consulting company, Health Horizon, and he uses Rome to basically run most of his company. So he has a, a shared graph, and I will put this link in the chat as well. And in this graph, he basically explains how he collaborates. Um, it's still a work in progress, but it will show you, I think, how he uses Rome as a CRM. And he has, I think, also so, some examples about using Rome to write technical specifications. So almost like a, a developer uh, log or sprint for sprint planning. I know the letter use case he's still working on. Uh, I've seen a demo that he gave to me where like they've built a system in Rome that completely replaces Salesforce for them. So they don't even need a CRM. They can run everything in Rome, all the notes, and they have a, um, they, they, they use the daily notes page really to, to resurface information and use different pages to, to enter information. All right. Um, and then the overall advice to collaborate is to use, to, to start simple and use Rome's built-in features. Let me take a sip of water. Um, so using block comments on, so if you just want to get started, if you don't have like a CRM use case, you just work with two or three people in a graph, get started that way. Start very small, just with, with, with a few team members. Ideally, people who already use Rome, um, agree on some basic structure, agree on, on um, uh, using personal pages to enter information, and then use the built-in functions like block comments. So in the case I'm using Mac, I can hold the uh, command key and this little plus will appear here. I click it and I can create a new comment. And I can close this. And then just by clicking here, I can see all the comments on this block. This is not a shared graph, so I cannot show what edit icons look like. But if you go to settings, you can enable um, edit icons. And what it will look like is the little bullets will change color. So like normally the bullets are, are black or gray, depending on the, uh, on the theme that you use. If you enable the edit icons, then some bullets will turn blue, green, purple, all the colors of the rainbow, depending on who wrote the block. So um, everyone gets their own color and you get, you, you see that uh, from the bullet. So that's a really easy way to distinguish your own notes from other people's notes. And as you can see here, by hovering over a bullet, I can see who edited the block. So, who, or yeah, who edited and, or created the block, uh, the last edit time and the last edit date. So that is basically what you get by hovering over the, the, the bullet. Um, so that's my best practice for collaborative graphs. All right, halfway, let's see, how are we doing with time? Still, still, well, so how much to log of my day? And this is, I think, mostly about writing, journaling. Again, my advice, start small. So uh, think of adding a template, maybe, uh, to with some simple metadata um, or maybe a little bit more sophisticated using smart blocks where you can add maybe a button on your, uh, on your daily notes page. I am using the new version of smart blocks, which allows me to automate um, my daily template. So I will go to, See smart blocks. Yeah. So if I go to the settings page of smart blocks, if you're not familiar with smart blocks, just go to uh, Rome stack and look in the knowledge space for smart blocks. 
So what this does, this new version, is it, I first of all changed the trigger. So if I hit the, the backspace key, that is the trigger to, to start uh, the, uh, like to pull up the, the, the workflows, uh, the, the templates. And then every day, one minute after midnight, the daily template is triggered. So these are just a series of buttons for me to, to nudge myself to journal. So if I go to my daily notes page, um, I have this button, for example, here, interstitial journaling. And I just have this button to, to prompt me to write. So this is an interstitial journal. It's a little bit, it's a little bit slow, but this is still version one of SmartBlocks. The new version will be instantly. Um, and then I just ask myself three questions, what I've worked on, what I'm going to work on, and what I want to achieve. So the question is how much to log? Just start tiny. Just write a few lines. If you read something interesting, um, just have a few tags that you use to, to easily resurface. So for example, I use the tag resource a lot. I use the tag app recommendation a lot. I use, and then I use, for example, app recommendation for writing and I turn writing into a link as well. So when I'm looking for app recommendations for writing, I can go to the app recommendation page, filter on writing, and then I have all the writing apps um, that were recommended to me. I've shown a lot now, so I hope I'm not confusing people. I'm, I'm known to confuse people a little bit. <laughs> so the key, start small and use your daily notes page. Um, all right. Now there is a core question, uh, number six, when to create a page and when just reference a block or just write a block. Um, Martin asked that. So I would say the, the, the basic unit in Rome is the block. And I would say, try to use the daily notes page as much as possible. So if you don't have to make the, a decision where something goes, you just write on the daily notes page. Um, I think that's the best entry point. And then use tags. So like I said, uh, I maybe I find an app recommendation to make writing easier or editing, whatever. I just go to my daily loads page and I write hashtag app, rec uh, app recommendation and uh, hashtag writing. And that is like my format. So in Rome, which is different from other note-taking apps, um, you don't really need to think in what context you need to, to play something. There's a caveat, obviously, because if you want to reserve stuff from Rome, you need some entry point. So I would say use the daily notes page to put all everything in and then ask yourself in what context do I want to re-encounter this block? And just think on the block level and then just tag accordingly because in Rome, because everything is, is linked in two ways, you can go to the app recommendation page and then you will see all the app recommendations. So I think that is, that is the simplest approach. Um, be like, and, and don't fret too much, uh, over creating a page or not, because when you tag something as app recommendation, you're basically creating the page app recommendation when you, when you link to it for the first time. Um, and the amount of pages that exist in Rome doesn't, don't really matter. I think what matters is standardization so that you don't have app recommendation or app recommendations or writing app recommendations. No, have one format and stick to it. And again, use templates to, to make it easier. And to give you one example, I use this template extensively for the Rome Stack newsletter. I have a template which adds two blocks, one with the hashtag resource for Rome Stack newsletter. And I give this a little thumbnail. So here, for example, I write the title 
uh, of the resource. And here I write the URL. So that is basically the, the standard that I use. Um, and I don't like, I don't have to go to a page, Rome stack, new set of resources, and then add that um, um, this, this resource, because that will in introduce friction, especially when I'm on mobile. Rome opens on the daily notes page. So I want to be able to trigger this template and just answer the resource and not think about it. The added advantage of doing this is that I can query very easily on all the resources for the Rome stack newsletter. So that's also a reason why I think I had about where do I want stuff to, to resurface. Bill, I let's see. Um, where's the app, app recommendations page, or is that just your tag name? Yeah, that's just a tag name that I that I have. So uh, I have a app. Let's see. Well, I have to do it like this. Here, app recommendation. So I just do that, and then for for writing. And then I have basically the, the same the same template. So name of app and the URL. So the only difference is I don't have a query set up for this combination. Whereas for the other one that I showed, like with a resource and Rome Stack newsletter, I do have a query set up for that. Just so I I have a very easy access to all the resources that are found. All right, halfway through, let's see some more questions. Um, Bill, yeah, your question is actually next up. <laughs> so extensions, there are lots from GitHub, uh, there, there are Rome uh, CSS extensions, there are Rome JS, so JavaScript extensions. There's also Rome 42, extensions, there's Rome JS. So is there a simple single way to manage them? Uh, the easy the, or the straightforward answer is no, there's no one way yet. So there are a few initiatives going on. You named romejs.com. So let's see if I written it down, no. But I am going to link to this article, which basically explains how to install Rome.js plugin. But you have Rome.js and the idea of Rome.js is that that in itself will become a plugin store. Then there is Rome Depot, which is uh, an idea also like a plugin store, which I don't know when it's going to launch, but that is like, that will be the official plugin store. So there are a few initiatives going on. Uh, the short answer to, to how to manage these is to ask yourself a few questions. So before you get started with plugins, there, there's also the, the, the question about security. So if you use like Rome CSS, which is basically just markup, it's, it's sprinkles. You know, when I, when I fire off my ZFS and template, I have a few CSS sprinkles. So for example, these hashtags are styled a specific way. That's very easy to do with CSS, completely safe to use, uh, don't tend to break. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's set and forget CSS. Uh, there's no nice way to just click some button and to install uh, um, CSS. F so for now, that's not really easy. Then there is um, then there are plugins themselves. So JavaScript. With that, I would really look out. So if you journal in your graph, if you have personal stuff in your graph, um, potentially, I'm not saying that it's very likely, but potentially, uh, the developer has complete access to your graph. If, if they're malicious with the Java uh, JavaScript plugin, so the Rome slash JS. Only install stuff from people you you trust. So the the RomeJS.com website, David Vargas, he is 
reliable. He is, he created Roam 42. Um, he creates created many, many plugins. Uh, I think all the code is open source, so you can check on it. And actually all the, the, the Roam DS code is essentially open source, but if you don't, if you don't, um, understand JavaScript, if you, if you don't know anyone who uses it and really understands it and can vouch, vouch for it, be careful. So that's, that's my, my recommendation. Then there are also extensions. So for example, there's Roam portal, which is basically just a browser extension. You cannot use it in the Roam desktop app, but you can use it in your browser. Those are a little bit safer, uh, but still, there are still plugins. Um, and to make it easy, I can show you my Roam JS page, how I organize them. So I have an active header and an inactive header. And whenever, and I should have, should have done this. So I just keep a, a list of what plugins are active or ina and inactive. It's not ideal. Um, I need to manually move them, but it gives me some overview of all the, the plugins that I have. Um, I recommend to keep them all on the Rome slash JS page. In theory, you can you can put this block anywhere and run from anywhere in your graph. You can run a uh, a plugin, but I recommend to all keep it on one page. I keep them on the just the Rome JS page. Uh, Bill, yeah. So Rome Hacker and David created uh, smart blocks together. So even before David took over, he was already working on smart blocks, uh, albeit in the background. So it was, like it wasn't known until he took over that he was actually working on the smart blocks as well. All right, let's move on with the questions. We're 20 minutes left, so right on schedule. Um, how to get ideas out of Rome? The easiest way, which I personally do, um, is simple copy paste. When you copy paste something, I've already done that, that in this session and put it in a chat, you will see it will have all the markdown and markup. To avoid this, simply right click a bullet and then click view as document, which will get rid of the bullets. And it also means when I select this text and then export it, or just, sorry, when I select this text and copy, paste it somewhere else, it will not carry the bullets. And it also turn like if I if I copy paste bullets uh, from Rome into um, either WordPress or ConvertKit, which, which have rich text editors, it will not paste the links as markdown. It will just um, turn the text into a link. So it saves a lot of time. Um, if you do want to export uh, maybe a markdown or an HTML or whatever, you can use Rome 42, um, which gives you, if you go to the Rome 42 button, you have this converter and then you can export basically what you see on the page in your current view and you can export it in different uh, text format. So plain text, uh, markdown and the Git GitHub flavored markdown means it's basically the, the standard. So Rome has a version of markdown. It's not the standard. So GitHub flavored is a de facto uh, standard. And then I can flatten it as well, which means it takes out all the indentations uh, and it will take away all the bullets as well, as you can see. Can also do it. I can also uh, export to HTML, uh, et cetera, et cetera. If you don't want to use a plugin, use Rome tools. And I will put both links in the chat. So this is Rome 42. Mm. 
and this one is wrong tools. Uh, this one doesn't send any data anywhere. By the way, Rome 42 doesn't send any data anywhere, uh, just to, to make sure. But if you don't want to use plugins, if you just want to copy paste and then clean up links and markdown and bullets, et cetera, et cetera, you can use Rome tools. Alternatively, so what I've just shown with the converter, the, the, the Rome 42 converter, you can also use the export option from the menu. So you have here and you can click export and then you get different options so you have markdown and again markdown uh, let me think i don't know i don't think this is converted to the github flavored markdown so it's not converted to the the standard markdown um so just keep that in mind don't 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 uh I, i'm not 100 percent sure though so <laughs> if someone knows it please enlighten me. And then you also have flat markdown, which means, again, all the indentation is removed and you just have a, a single uh, file. Again, here is the, here are the options. Um, Julia, is there an easy way to export Im images as well as the text in markdown? Um, I should test this. I don't know um, if when you export to Markdown, if the images, like the image links go along, I should test this out. Um, I'm going to send a, a follow-up email anyway. So I need to, I need to check that. Um, as for non-Markdown, so if you say, well, I just want to copy this. Um, you can just copy this, so Command C, and then paste it into a rich text editor. And nine out of 10 times, it will also paste the image. It may or may not link to the URL of the, of the image. So in Rome, each image gets its own unique URL. Um, if you save this URL, you can, you can visit it from outside of Rome. So I can paste this into a browser and I can visit the image. Um, there is some kind of password protection, but people with this link will be able to see your images. So again, that's also something to keep in mind. Um, and it may be, it, it may link to this image. So maybe you need to manually edit. It's not ideal. Again, it's not ideal. Um, what other ways for images? Yeah, I'm going to check what how it handles images when when exporting um i also wonder if you export to markdown if it will export all the images i'm, I'm not sure um and bill says and he posts something in the um chat as well rome js has a google docs extension interface to rome when you upload to rome it actually goes to google docs yeah um, I think they also have a Dropbox plugin. So if you don't, again, if you don't want to store your, your images uh, on Rome servers, you can use a plugin to uh, actually send all the images to Dropbox or Google Drive. So um, yeah, have a look at, at RomeJS.com. Still doing good with time, yeah. Um, uh, how to get an, no, sorry, how to tweet from Rome. So it's, it's related to how to get ideas out of Rome. Um, again, Rome JS, <laughs> there's a plugin, a uh, Twitter by, uh, uh, by David Vargas. And I have written an article about Mercury and we'll link to that article as well as well. It's publicly accessible and Mercury is a Chrome browser plugin which also adds like a little tweet counter. Um, it, um, and a tweet button. So we'll here. Yeah. So let me quickly show it because in here I have a few screenshots. I realize I need to switch my screen share. 
for that. So this is Mercury. Uh, play it a bit slow. So there are a few ways. Um, oh, it's really slow. So Mercury, it's a, it's a clone, uh, Chrome plugin, but uh, it also works in Vivaldi and Brave browsers. And then basically, this is just a walkthrough of how to set it up. And what it looks like is this. So you add a hashtag, uh, tweet this. You can change this in the plugin. And then any block you nest underneath will be a separate tweet. You can even include images and you get this little counter. When you're done, you only have to click the Twitter icon and it will tweet out everything. Um, I've used this extensively. Uh, nowadays, I use Typefully to, to write Twitter threads. Um, but yeah, this, this just works really, really well. Uh, alternatively, use the Rome.js plugin that I just linked to in, uh, in the chat. Uh, by the way, I just switched some, some things in the stream. Can you still see my row? Yeah, perfect. Next, aliases. Uh, yeah, this is, this is a, <laughs> a painful thing for, for many people. If you uh, write just a link maybe uh, one with capitalization, one only small letters. Uh, yeah, you, you will create two pages. So how to create aliases on a page level currently not possible. I do know that the Rome team is looking for a way to, to solve this. Um, and that, yeah, the, so they're still figuring out what, what is the best approach. Um, but again, very, very few, at least I don't know of any, except for one, I think Codex Editor, which is in closed beta or alpha. Uh, like none of the note-taking tools that I know have like page aliases. Uh, drop it in the chat if you do know uh, some, because um, I think this is a pain point for many. On a link level, uh, most people already know this, command K, or uh, control K, which will basically create, oops, oops there was command enter, command K. So the format is in here, you do the link label, and then in here, you do the double brackets uh, and with the page name. So that is basically the format. So link label, page name. So if you, I use this often when, for example, the, the page, the metadata is in plural, and I want to use uh, something like a, a singular word. I just, instead of creating a new page, thus dividing like my, my references, I just create an alias. Uh, for, and I also got, got some comments about uh, people who work with several languages. So personally, I write in Dutch and in English in my graph. Um, but I keep my metadata in one language, which is English. Um, so that, that is a best practice. And then um, for stuff that you, that you have queries set up for or things that you write about often, I recommend using te either templates or text expanders. So using like Keyboard Maestro or Text Blaze or Text Expander, which is also a tool. Um, Again, it's not ideal. It's it's I know it 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 adds like a mental burden because you need to you need to think of oh what what convention did I use? For example, app recommendation. Was it capital R or or small R? So yeah, the, tricky. <laughs> Something tricky. And I like I run into this also. Um like sometimes I need to go into my graph and merge pages. So when you change a page name and the page already exists, so the, the name you change it to already exists, you get a, 
notification asking you do you want to merge the pages. So that's what I do. So you do need to keep a little bit of upkeep. Um, final question. Oh, wait, I see Marcelo. Obsidian does um, via front meta metadata. Uh, how do I explain front meta? Yeah, it's basically just a metadata block, right? Which, which gives information about the page. Um, yeah, I do that as well in, in Rome. So for example, I have a, I have a, I have a metadata. Oh, I have a, let's see, book metadata, for example. And I have hashtag books and I give it the status. So this is like my standard that I use. So I don't make the mistake that sometimes I write uh, books like this. And as you can see, I've made this mistake a few times. So what I then would do is go to this page and I see, hey, I made this mistake. So I changed the name to capital with the capital B books and it will ask, oh, it will ask, uh, books already exist, merge pages, click yes. And now I'm taken to the books page. which is very slow. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Oh, Bill, thank you. Uh, David at Rome.js has page synonyms. I haven't checked it out yet. So that is a really, really good recommendation. I'm going to save that one. Um, And by the way, I'm going to turn this into a resource. So now when it's Friday and it's time to write, write my newsletter, this will be waiting for me. So thank you, Bill. Um, last question. Three more minutes, okay. Uh, all right, final question. How to decide what to learn about Rome? Uh, I feel overwhelmed. Yes, many people have that. Um, again, start with tiny use cases. My advice with anything that changes your way of doing or thinking, especially when we talk about habit formation, for me, using Rome daily was actually a habit I had to develop and cultivate because if you look back uh, my history of like in my graph, sometimes you can see a week where I didn't use Rome, but that was in a period that wasn't my, like in my habit yet. Now I have my shutdown habit. I close my laptop, but I keep Rome open on the daily notes page. So when I open my laptop, the first thing I see is a journaling prompt. So that is that is what I do. I started with that very tiny use case, and then I started to build on top of that. Um, my advice is don't aim to learn everything about Rome. Like I do this for a living, and I don't know everything about Rome. So uh, it's uh, as Connor sometimes says. So that's the CEO of uh, of Rome Research. He says. Our aim is to be like uh, Excel for note-taking. So if you know a little bit about Excel, there are thousands of formulas and macros and plugins and all these kinds of things that you can do. Most people just use maybe uh, average function or to sum up stuff, just very basic stuff, but it's like it's hidden for them. And I think as we are figuring out as a community how to do different things in, in, in Rome. And then you encounter nerds like me and we link to plugins and all these different things you can do with Rome. And we have been using Rome for maybe one or two years and we do everything in Rome. And you look at us and you think, oh, I need to have that same level. No, you don't. Just 
look for something that works for you and and find something that find that, that, that's useful for you so find find a simple structure for your notes uh, when you find something interesting and then nudge yourself to revisit it every now and then so personally i have my weekly uh planning session and i go through my to-dos and stuff that i saved in my database and so i have all these little processes that are triggered just by a moment in time because i have my monday morning week orientation and uh friday afternoon it's always writing the rome sec newsletter and then i have all these different little workflows and systems attached to those moments in time so it's really try and error, I think, but that's with everything that, that has to do with knowledge work and we can learn from each other. So for example, I can show you how I write my newsletter and you can learn from that, how to write your own newsletter. Uh, if your use case is different. Yeah. Uh, I always recommend to look in the Rome stack knowledge base, which recently I opened up largely to, to the public. So. Um, if you're not a member, you can still access, I would say 80% of the knowledge base. The only thing you don't get are self-paced courses that are coming up and the video recordings. So I'm, I'm building a video repository and a newsletter archive. So the newsletter is free, but I am building an archive of basically all the resources I've linked to over 30 newsletters, which I think would be around a hundred resources, just plugins, CSS snippets, smart blocks, all, all the kind of uh, stuff. So apart from that, you, you can learn a lot from the knowledge base. And if you, if you want to learn something and you're active on Twitter, I will also uh, put my Twitter handle, just DM me. Um, or even better yet, just send me a tweet in public. And you can also email me, support at roamstack.com, even if you're not a member, because the way this works is I do these sessions to learn from you. So all these questions I mined from, from the, the survey. And I just want to help the, the Rome community to, to to make, make the most of this tool without feeling overwhelmed. So feeling overwhelmed, many people have that. Uh, my aim is to help people just point them in the right direction and teach them one thing at a time. So start with just very little features, try to think of little workflows and systems that you can build. And coming back to the first question, take a systems perspective. So think about what do you want to achieve? And if you, so even if you are going to collect notes from an article, ask yourself, why am I collecting notes from this article? What am I going to do with it? Um, in what context do I want it to show up? So think of tags you can add. Think of little reasons you, you have to revisit your notes. Maybe plan a little bit of a reflection time once a week to go through your notes, tag them with something. Uh, like I tag all the, all the highlights that come from Readwise with two process. So I have a page named to process, and I just have a weekly to do to go into my to process page and pick out stuff to, to feed my, uh, to, to feed myself writing prompts because I always riff off highlights and turn them into takeaways and notes for my future self. So I have several reasons to go through my notes, which actually forces me, it's a forcing function to actually do it. So my voice is gone almost. <laughs> I don't know if anyone has, uh, has any follow-up questions. You can unmute yourself if you want, put it in the chat. I asked a question in the chat about, do you have, is it in your knowledge base or do you have any other resources to learn more about queries? Yeah. Didn't I put that in the chat? Ooh. No, I just put it in the chat. Yeah, I, I posted some oh. links, but let me, yeah. So the question was how to, 
yeah, I think I posted it, but I will post it again. Um, yeah, sorry, I uh, yeah, it's it's with the with the markdown, but the the first one, the first article I linked to is using search and row. Uh, that is basically using the search bar, the block references, queries, everything. Then there's the article searching with queries. And if that is too confusing for you and you're okay with using a plugin, use the Visual Builder, uh, again, by David Vargas. I've written a little how-to article uh, showing, and I think there's, or it's a video I, 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 I recorded. Um, yeah, so, so that's basically my advice to get started with queries and if sorry, you're... I did see that out there. So I did grab that. I am so sorry. So I will go and look at those links and learn. Not a problem. If anything isn't clear at the bottom of, uh, these articles, these knowledge base articles, there's a little box where you can leave feedback. So, uh, if you, if you leave feedback and your email address, uh, I can contact you once I have clarified the page. So. Bill, you're, you're amazing. Thank you for linking to, uh, <laughs> to all the, uh, the plugins. Yeah. Again, roamjazz.com. It's, it's a wealth of plugins and all the plugins that are there, I would say you can trust. So you shouldn't be afraid that David is, is looking into your database. Uh, too many people uh, using, using those plugins that also understand the code, that actually look at the code before they install stuff. So we've run over, oh my goodness, seven minutes, sorry. Uh, I want to thank you all. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to me on Twitter. Rome, uh, my handle is Romestack. Uh, email me at support at roamstack.com. If you like this, these kinds of sessions and you want to be notified, go to roamstack.com, uh, sign up for the newsletter. I don't do spam. I only do a newsletter. So any, you'll only hear from me on Fridays with a thousand words where I just share four or five, uh, plugins or articles or videos that I think are useful often around a specific topic. So Last week, I wrote about systems for writing. And the weeks before, I did some newsletters about journaling. Uh, and if you are a member, uh, next week, probably there will be a, a newsletter archive live. If there are no more questions, just want to thank you all. <laughs>